everyone and welcome to episode 67 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Cardiff City and coming up today is a transfer special before we do head into our second season in the Premier League. Also we are switching to a new tactic ahead of the new seasons doing a bit of planning with that as well as well as some players whose contracts are expiring and that is what some of our transfer business is going to be around and also the small matter of the job at Tottenham Hotspur being available off the back of their manager retiring. So there's a fair bit to keep an eye on over this off-season. But if you are looking forward to this transfer special, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and do like the look of this series, then also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. So you can keep up to date when we do get stuck into the season in tomorrow's episode. And we did finish 8th on the Premier League table at the end of last week in our first season back in the Premier League with Cardiff City, our first season in the Premier League of this save. If you missed how that one ended, I'll leave a link to that episode over in the top right corner. Everton beating Manchester City in the FA Cup final, robbing us of a spot in a Conference League qualifier. Still a bit annoyed at both clubs about that, but nonetheless, it does mean that we can focus all our attention yet again on the domestic side of things for this upcoming season and probably the most important thing going into this new season is the fact that we are going to change our tactical style going into this new season our assistant manager did recommend that we switch away from our fluid counter attack and into either one of the ticky tacker systems or a control position so because of that we have loaded up two new tactical styles and I think the one that we are going to go for Depends if we do quite well with it over the pre-season. We are going to try out the vertical Tiki Tacker, which has been pretty successful on this channel so far. It was very successful in our build nation last season with Volsunger and also in the beta. We did win both the Premier League and the Champions League with Liverpool with the same tactical style as well, albeit this time we are going to keep our 4-2-3-1. But this is the way our best 11 does look like going into this new season. As you can see, a few different roles there. If we do keep things as the game recommends for a vertical ticky tacker, albeit we can change that so it is a bit better suited to some of our players. But for now, we'll just keep this so that we can maybe plan around some of these roles for some of these signings that we will look to make in this upcoming transfer window. And also, we do have some players that are coming off contract as well, which we'll get to in a second. But this is what the vertical ticky tacker does look like in terms of the actual roles. The reason that I've gone for this tactic is that most of the roles do match up with what we already had on our fluid counter attack from last season anyway. So hopefully this is the one where it's the least amount of change from what we were previously doing. And that should mean that we can adapt to this one a little bit better before we do get into the start of the new Premier League season. Also, we do have a control position style tactic locked up as well in case we want to try that if the vertical ticky tacker is not getting some good results over the preseason in case both of those do fail, we can always go back to that fluid counter-attack that did see us get that 8th place finish in the Premier League last season, albeit I do think it was fair to say our form in the latter half of that season did drop off a little bit compared to the first half. We are going to try and play some vertical ticky ticker at Cardiff City this season, but without some of the players who have been here since we did join the club a few seasons ago, if we go over and have a look at the players whose contracts are expiring soon. And by soon, I mean in a week's time there, you can see Joe Rails, Perry Ng, Alex Patterson, and Andy Renamotta, their contracts are expiring, and those are the players we have decided not to renew contracts on. So it does mean both our captain, Joe Rails, and vice-captain, Perry Ng, are not going to be at the club next season, as well as Alex Patterson, although to be fair, he was a bit of break glass in case of emergency back up in the midfield anyway, so not going to miss him too much. Good to get his wage off of the books and also Andy Renamotta. So those are three bench players that we do need to try and replace going in to this new season first things first, albeit in the case of Perry Ng and Joe Rails as well, we do have players coming back from loan at Inverness who can step into those players' shoes. So thankfully the only role that we really need to find a replacement for is Andy Renamotta as a backup ball winning midfielder in behind Khalid El Bloshi and also I think the other area that we might want to improve before we do any other type of business in this transfer window with our 30 odd million pounds that we did get at the end of last week is a backup striker in behind Marco Brun who was a little bit streaky last season. 
So it would be nice to get a consistent player in behind that and hopefully find someone a little bit better than the likes of Renato Tomic, who certainly has a fair bit of potential, but might be better served with a season in the under-21s getting some regular game time instead of sitting on our bench. So I think the first two targets that we are going for in this transfer window are a backup striker and backup boarding midfielder. And from there, we'll see how much spare funds that we do have. And in terms of the money that we do still have available, it is £36 million, but as you can see, there's not much spare there on that wage budget, albeit that will change once those contracts for those four players do expire. And on the 23rd of June, we have already made an approach for our first signing of this window, and it is going to be a backup striker for Marco Blunt. So we've done that one nice and early for £5.5 million overall, even though the fee is £5 million. Alejo Belize out of Argentina will be our new backup striker in behind Marco Blun. He's not rated that well in terms of star rating and potential, only three stars for each, but does enjoy big matches, is consistent, adaptable, and if we are going to play that same tactic that was default for vertical Tiki Taka, is very, very good in that deep lying forward role. So that is the reason that we have decided to go for Alejo Villes, formerly of Rosario Central. He will join the club for just over £5 million. He spent his entire time at that club so far. 47 goals and 121 appearances. And as you can see, in terms of average rating for that club, pretty good when he has got some game time. So hopefully will do a decent job when he is called upon when Marco Brun isn't firing, as I said. He was just a little bit streaky for us last season in his first one in the Premier League. But Alejo Villes is going to be our first signing of this window, which does mean now just that one area that we do need to try and improve before we can go looking for some other players just to strengthen overall depth here at Cardiff. And that is a backup ball winning midfielder in behind Khalid Al Bloshi. Also, something that we do need to keep an eye out on in this transfer window is job openings. If we go over and have a look at the job centre, the Tottenham job is available, albeit so far we've had no interest for us from Tottenham Hotspur, no wanted symbols above us. Like we did have four clubs last year, like Fulham and Bournemouth and a few others as well in amongst that season. We did impress a little bit with Cardiff City, but surprisingly the favourite for that job is current Manchester United manager Ruben Van Nisselrooy, and he is awaiting a permit for that Tottenham move, that wouldn't go down too well with some Manchester United fans, I would imagine, because they only just finished a little bit above United in the Premier League last season, albeit that does mean they are in the Champions League, while United are in the Conference League. But still, for a former Manchester United player, that does seem like a very, very interesting move. Could cause some riots between those two clubs. But it does look like Ruud van Nistelrooy might be on his way from Manchester United to Tottenham. So in that case, we might also need to keep a bit of an eye out on the Manchester United job. Still got some really good players on their books, the likes of Marcus Rashford, and they do have European football this season after pipping us into that seventh spot. So if that job came up, that might be another interesting one that we might have to take a look at, but only, I think, if a club does come after our services, not actively looking to leave Cardiff where we are building up quite a good squad, it does feel like. Also interesting to see that the media prediction for United this upcoming season is only 7th, but definitely something to keep an eye out on there. Ruud van Nisseroy might be on his way out of Old Trafford and to Tottenham Hotspur, but we have made our first signing of this window, a new backup striker in Alejo Villes. And we've gone forward a few weeks off the back of that first signing in this episode. And we have filled that gap for that second area of the backup ball winning midfielder in behind Khalid Al Bloshi. Before that, though, as you can see, yet another takeover rumor here at Cardiff City that does seem to be popping up every couple of months. But we have found someone who can sit in behind on the bench, Al Bloshi, our star boy, and the next gen winner. And we are going to sign them off of Sheffield United. This is Adam Jashari. 8.5 million pounds. It's going to take 9 million out of our budget, which has gone down to 19.5 once we have balanced out that wage budget just a little bit to make sure this deal could go through before those contracts did expire once the new season did tick over. But we are going to accept that deal 40k a week for a squad player. He looks like a very solid midfield option, as you can see, is most suited to that deep line playmaker role, which El Bloshi does play these days. 
three and a half star current ability, four star potential, a little bit older than what we would like to sign here at Cut FC. They do like us to sign players under the age of 23 years old, but still, he looks like a very good bench option again. Consistent performer, enjoys big matches. He should do a good job when Al Bloshi does need a rest and has done a decent job in his career so far at Luzerne, Fulham briefly as well as Sheffield United in the championship. So it looks like a decent bench option. And from here, we can look to spend the rest of our transfer budget to replace some players if we do sell them or to add that little bit of extra squad depth to hopefully push ourselves a little bit further up that Premier League table. Also in terms of those players who were coming back from loan to replace both Rowles and Perry Ng, they are now back with the team. So we can show you guys those players now that they are actually in our squad. So the first player, the one who's going to replace Perry Ng is Ian Hughes. He was on loan at Inverness last season. He was quite a promising player when we first got to the club. These days, two and a half star current ability and four star potential. That potential has gone down just a little bit, but still should be a good backup option in behind Ben Hardy and his homegrown club and nation as well. We're going to give him a chance in that backup role at right back in the other player to fill in that role, which Joe Rowles had last season as the backup to Brian Quazada, is going to be filled by Davis and Savino, also back from a loan at Inverness as well, where he had a decent time over there. In the Scottish Premiership, also two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. We did use him in our season in the Championship, where we did win that and get promoted to the Premier League. Has now had a spell in Scotland just to hopefully develop a little bit more, get a bit more game time than we got here last season, and he can be the backup behind Quazada and get some game time in that role. So it does feel like those absences have been filled quite nicely there from those players who were out on loan last season. So it does mean now I think that we have filled those gaps that those expiring contracts have left us as well as a slightly stronger backup striker than Renato Tomic. That might mean that we can actually send someone like Zakalaya Ziani out on loan this season so that he can develop. But in terms of what we do have left in our transfer budget, it is going to be around about 10 million left. And that wage budget now is quite high. So we can also adjust that and see what that does bring us as well is try and get rid of some of the older players here at the club who do have contracts expiring at the end of this new season. Players like Serhal Galasai and Marine Jacqueline and also confirmation of what we did suspect would happen earlier. And that is that Rude Van Nisselrooy indeed has left Manchester United to take over at Tottenham Hotspur, to be fair, is being paid nearly three times what he was getting paid at Old Trafford and also does get some Champions League football, but still very controversial move, that one, Rude Van Nisselrooy jumping ship to take over at Tottenham Hotspur. But unfortunately, yet again, it doesn't look like one of those big clubs is after us, no wanted symbol from Manchester United, apparently the favourite for that job, if we go and have a look at the centre, is Marcelino, and he is the current manager of Watford, who just won the championship to get promoted from the Premier League, so that would be a little bit of a downgrade, I would say, for Manchester United, if they did go after him, albeit also no wanted symbol above his head, so I don't know if he is actually the true favourite for that job at Manchester United, are on the hunt for a new manager after Ruben Nisroy did dump them. And also Norwich on the hunt for a new manager as well, albeit not one that we are interested in. But those are our first two signings done of the window. And now we can spend that spare money on some extra squad depth. And we are back a day prior to our first preseason game, which is against Sacramento as we are on an American tour in the preseason. But our first sale of this transfer window is about to take place. Marlene Jacqueline did have a contract expiring at the end of this season, and I did feel like for this upcoming season, Louis Hurtado would be a better option in that backup role ahead of Jacqueline in behind Inna Sally. So we are going to take 5.25 million for Jacqueline. It does include a £5,000 a week wage selling team contribution, but he is getting paid by us a quite decent wage. If we go over and have a look of £35,000, so getting that off our wage budget is going to be quite useful for what would have been a third choice left winger. So Marlene Jacqueline is going to go and join Sivaspor in Turkey for 5.25 million. We only get 2.6 of that because we only get 50% of transfer revenue. But that is our first sale of this transfer window.
And not too long off the back of that first sale of this transfer window, we are going to make our second one. This is a player who was down in our under-21 team, has a little bit of potential. Thomas White, three and a half star White potential. I feel like that's a player who probably wouldn't break into our team anyway. He's a player that we did sign on a free from the New Saints, and he is worth 3.2 million. We are going to sell him with not that much of a high potential for 2.5 million. Again, we don't actually get that much of it only £600,000, but we will sell him and get that extra money in the bank. He is going to go to Stoke C, the team who nearly stopped us from getting into Europe last season, albeit that was not much of a thing anyway, because Everton went and stuffed that one up. But Thomas White, our second sale of the window for £2.5 million, with 30% off profit from the next sale included as well. And also, we did play our first preseason friendly with that new vertical Tiki Taka style, and unfortunately, only a nil all draw there, admittedly. I did leave the mentality on balance, which is probably not the best idea against a team who we really, really should have been thumping into be for our first game back this season. So maybe a few excuses also. Both Dominguez and Quisada are currently at the Olympics. We're a little bit weaker in those areas, but still a game that we should have been winning. We'll go and have a look quickly at the stats. And as you can see, well and truly dominated this game but just did not put the ball in the back of the net. So maybe for the next one, we will go positive and also just adjust those roles so they do suit the players a little bit more, but not an encouraging start. Maybe if that continues, we switch to control position, but not a good result from our first preseason friendly off the back of selling our second player. And in a few days off the back of that second sale, we are going to make another signing. This was a player I would have liked to get on our books last season. He was not going to get a work permit. The same situation does apply. But I do think he's a player with quite high potential at the very least. We could make a good profit off of. So we are going to sign Odilon Drolli. We won't spend too long on this one though. Because he is going to be loaned back to his current club in Mimosas for the rest of the season. Seeing as he can't get a work permit. But this is only going to cost us £230,000 and 1.1k a week. In wages, he is a very promising Ivory Coast midfielder, two and a half star current ability with that five star potential. Has not got a senior cap yet for that senior Ivory Coast team, but has got quite a few for the under 20 team. And I do think he will be a player that eventually we can get a work permit for, but at the moment, just not quite of the high quality enough to get one of those, but certainly a player on the cheap who I did feel like was worth a punt, hopefully might make his way to Cardiff at some stage. But there's our third signing of the window. Drolle, albeit because of work permit issues, goes back out on loan to Mimosas. And we are back about to make our fourth signing of this window, and it is quite a big one as well. Someone who makes their way straight into our starting 11 at right wing, which I know is actually quite a strong area for us anyway. But first things first, a lot better. When we put our rotation team out in that second friendly against Orange County, adjusted the roles to suit these players and it did seem to work a lot better as well as that positive mentality so hopefully our regular first choice 11 will do better in our next friendly but does look like there might be some promising signs with this vertical tiki taka holding the ball quite nicely position wise which is something which wasn't happening much at all with our fluid counter attack but this could be our best signing of the season also there you can see our early schedule for the premier league next season some nice fixtures early on, I think it is fair to say, but this is probably going to be our most important signing of this window. A very low release calls for a player of this quality. We have 13.5 million left in the transfer budget, so we're certainly looking for some good promising players on the cheap. And Golan Jovic did come up from Partizan in Serbia. He will cost us 5.75 million pounds with that 5.25 million pound release clause. As you can see, there is a minimum fee release clause there for some clubs in the Champions League, but a lot higher than what we are paying for him. £55,000 a week, but he is very, very good, as you will see once we do click for today, and he does join us here at Cardiff City. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to play on our next friendly. We do take on the LA Galaxy, but as you can see, really, really good player for us out on that right wing. He is significantly better than Carlos Dominguez. So that does now mean that we will have two very good players in that area. So now wing is a very strong position for us. But there you can see him at 21 years old. A ton of bright yellow attributes. 
really suits the roles that we do use here at Cardiff City. Could also actually put him as an attacking midfielder and keep Dominguez out on the right-hand side, but I think it will be better suited if he does play out on the right and he looks like a great pickup for that 5.25 million release clause that we did trigger. Lots of very good attributes for that wing role, and he goes straight into our starting spot. As I said, formerly of Partizan, where he started his career off quite nicely, some really good performances in the past season for him with free player of the matches, and that looks like a good cheap deal for us to strengthen the team here at Cardiff City. Goran Jovic joining from FK Partizan. And we are back with some very hilarious news about the Manchester United update in terms of their search for a new manager. But first we picked up a quite nice free one win against the LA Galaxy in our third friendly. This one with as close as we do currently have to our first choice 11 with both Dominguez and Quisada being at the Olympics. And also our new signing Jovic is not on this training camp in America. So he'll get stuck into the friendlies once we do return back to Wales, but a good solid result for us there, which does tend to indicate this vertical tiki ticker might work if we can beat a team like the LA Galaxy while we are still getting our fitness back. But we go over and have a look at what has happened with Manchester United. And as you can see, they briefly had a new manager there in Ernesto Valverde, and he left after one day. So we need to explain this a little bit. They appointed him, and then the very next day, he was under transfer bid from the Spanish national team. So he spent one day as the manager of Manchester United before he ditched them to coach the Spanish international team. Absolutely golden stuff there from football manager. So what that means is after all that time, Manchester United are yet again on the lookout for a new manager, albeit yet again not interested in us. But we don't mind that too much. Still quite happy here at Cardiff City but thought that was quite hilarious. The former Tottenham manager in the save universe just mucking Manchester United around a little bit before he buggered off to join Spain after only 24 hours in charge. So it does mean yet again, Manchester United on the lookout for a new manager. And going forward a few weeks off the back of that Manchester United update, as you can see, they are still on the hunt for a second replacement manager. Also Watford now, because their manager did in the end leave, albeit as you can see, not for that United job, which he so much wanted. Instead, we might actually have a little bit to do with him because he has become the manager of the Welsh national team. So maybe the Welsh footballer of the year, Ruben Colwell, will actually get picked for the national team now, which would seem like a sensible option. But we're coming back because we are going to sell a right winger to make up the acquisition of Jovic. And that is Serhal Gullisai. In the final year of his contract, we decided to get him off of our wage books. Only £160,000 for a player who was good for us in our first season and a bit here at Cardiff City, but also was taking up quite a large wage for a player who wasn't going to get on the field too much. £25,000 a week. Good to get that off of our books. And he is going to see if he can cut the mustard over in France with Dijon. But Serhal Gullisai is leaving us for £160,000, albeit only going to see £77,000 of that, but most importantly, getting him off the wage bill. In another couple of days off the back of that sale of Gullisai, we're going to make our fourth sale in this transfer window, and this one's a little bit more interesting. Konstantinos Shirelabus, he was a youngster that we did sign off the next gen list a few seasons ago, was not happy that he was down in the under-21s. So we are going to sell him because he was causing a bit of a fuss down there. We are going to get £1 million for him. It is only going to be £425,000 added to our transfer budget. Also, no percentage of next sale, which is not ideal. But as I said, was kicking up quite the fuss. Still had quite a bit of potential as well. But just a player who didn't really suit the roles where he is best suited in this team. Both centre-back and right-back, I feel like, has potential. But at the moment... His attributes, quite hard to give him game time in the first team. And to be fair, we are making quite a healthy profit on this one. We signed him last season for only £60,000. So certainly a big profit made, even if we only see around half of that. But KC is going to leave us for £1 million. He is going to young boys over in Switzerland. Also, we do have the top young player odds for the Premier League this season. Two players from Cardiff on that list, the reigning champion, and Khalid Al-Bloshi is the favourite, and also further down 
our new right winger in Goran Jovic. And also we have loaned out a few players in amongst those sales as well to get some first team football as they were unlikely to see much of it in the first team this season. And then you can see them down the right hand side, probably the two most notable ones who were kind of on the fringe of getting into the first team this season occasionally. Tomas Jones, quite a promising left back who has been featuring for some under teams here for Wales. He goes to St. Mirren, so should get some decent game time there in the Scottish Premiership, one of our former Anzac Challenge teams over on Twitch. And also, we do have Dominic Van Gaal, quite a promising centre back. He has gone to Hull City, will be a regular starter in the Championship. So, those are two quite high potential players who will get some regular team football at a decent level this season. And also, our third choice goalkeeper, Chris Brady, he is unlikely to get his work permit extended if we do keep him here. So we are going to loan him out to Exeter City for this season, and we can call up then that good young goalkeeper we got in our youth intake here last season to be that third choice in case of emergency. Also something which we might need to keep an eye out on, Carl Jacob Hine, because we didn't play that much cup football last season, also currently cannot renew his contract. So maybe if a good bid does come in for him, that might be another player that we do need to try and find a replacement for. But for now, we will try and keep Carl Jacobine in here as the cup goalkeeper because he is quite decent. But we might be on the lookout potentially for a new one with those work permit rules. And at the start of August, we are going to make our fifth signing of this transfer window. Not too far away now from our first game in the Premier League where we do take on Brighton. Hopefully a game where we can get some revenge on those guys after things did end a little bit roughly against those guys last season the game. We should have beaten them in towards the end of last week here on the channel. But we are going to try and improve our backup stocks in the left wing role with the signing of Luca Orellano from Crystal Palace. £4.3 million will be deducted from our transfer budget of £9.5 million, but £33,000 a week for a squad player. Don't mind this at all, especially because it means then we can give Louis Hurtado some regular football in the under-21s and then start him in our cup games, while Orellano can pretty much just be solely a bench player. So it does mean that someone like Hitado can develop just that little bit more. But Luca Orellano will join us from Crystal Palace, and he is a very, very good wing option as a backup three and a half star current ability and potential. Formerly of Valleys did not play too much for Crystal Palace over the last few seasons, but yet again, a bench player who is consistent and enjoys big games, do like that signing, even though it's a bit older than we usually go for here at Cardiff City, but it could be something we do look to do in the remainder of this transfer window. Just add some bench players to some of those youngsters who otherwise would be there, can drop down to the under-21s, so they're not wasting some game days where they could be developing, getting some regular football, but Luca Orellano joins us as a bench option on either wing. And we come back for the sixth signing of this transfer window here at Cardiff City. Unfortunately, it is not Marco Stamenic. This should have been the sixth signing. But Everton came in, hijacked the deal, paid him three times less a wage than we were going to pay him at Cardiff City. But he chose Everton because their squad looked stronger than ours, even though they were formerly in the championship, to be fair. They did win the FA Cup. But that's a little bit frustrating. The fellow New Zealander choosing Everton over Cardiff City where he would have been an impact sub because he would have been a brilliant option which would have meant someone like Savino could have done a similar job to what we just got that other player in for to do the same to Hurtado get that regular under 21 football and then step into the team and we were going to rotate it a little bit instead of wasting his time sitting on the bench we have still found a player to fill that role albeit not nearly as exciting Abdulu Bar from Southampton for only £200,000, so a lot cheaper than we were going to get Marco Stamenic for. £525,000 will come out of our transfer budget of £5.75 million for this one, but he is an impact sub and should do a decent job. Just an extra body, as I said, so we have that little bit of extra depth in the midfield and also can give players like Savino a bit more regular game time than they otherwise would have gotten especially if we don't go too deep in some of those cup competitions. But Abdullah Bar will sign for us for £200,000. Is kind of a player who can hopefully fill in in any area where he is required. as French, 25 years old, and does still have 
a little bit of extra potential further than his three-star current ability, but very solid midfielder who can sit on the bench for us in the Premier League this season. In two days prior to our opening game of the Premier League this season, I think this will be our final deal before we do get into gameplay in tomorrow's episode, but we have signed an extra centre back just to maybe give someone like Erhog Hyde and Hayati Ertank that game time in the backup team, like we have mentioned with those last two signings, the reasons we did those. This is exactly the same, albeit Musa Niakate from Nottingham Forest, even though he's 32 years old, in terms of his attributes, actually still looks really, really good. It is going to take up pretty much the remainder of our transfer budget and our wage budget. We are going to sign the 32-year-old yet again, this one in particular, a lot older than we would like to go for here usually at Cardiff. But even though it's quite a large outlay in comparison to the other deals that we have done in this transfer window, I think this is still a decent bit of business for an impact sub. Look at those attributes for a 32-year-old. Jumping reach is really good. Natural fitness really good. His pace is actually quite good for someone of his age and his mentals and physicals, as you can see. Just really good. The technicals, not quite as good, but still looks like a really good centre-back option who could actually push his case in the first team over either of our starters in Mark McGuinness or Ola Veyum. But nonetheless, at the very least, will be a great bench option for us and is going to cost us around about that £5.5 million pound mark. And as I said, that pretty much uses up our transfer budget here at Cardiff City for the moment, unless we can get rid of some more players. But that will take place over the course of the rest of August when we do get stuck into the start of the Premier League season. But as you can see, a lot of experience for the Senegalese centre-back at lots of clubs. And he joins us here at Cardiff City as an impact sub. But as I said, for 32 years old, does still look pretty good in terms of those attributes. And only a few hours off the back of that signing of Dia Carte, which probably does our business for this window for now. As you can see, we are about to get stuck into the first game of the Premier League this season between Chelsea and West Ham on the Friday. We do not kick off till the Sunday. We do take on Brighton and we'll come back for the first two games of the season in tomorrow's episode. But that will do it for the transfers and we'll get stuck into the rest of the window over the next few episodes to start off this week, but hopefully our squad here at Cardiff City a bit stronger than it was at the start of today's episode. Definitely think in terms of squad depth, we have improved quite a bit, so hopefully we can finish in a similar position to where we did last season, albeit season preview-wise. We are predicted to finish all the way down in 18th, so not fancy that much at all, albeit quite similar to where we were last season, but new key player in Gordon Jovic, that signing in particular, I think a really, really good one for just over £5 million with that release clause. But I definitely think, yet again, we should be a team who can avoid a relegation battle. And I think our squad here is a bit stronger than it was for our first one in the Premier League last season. And also in terms of how the rest of our preseason did go once we did get back from our American trip, as you can see, some very convincing wins. So it does look like this vertical tiki taka should suit us a little bit iffy there against one of our affiliate clubs with our rotation team. But in our most recent friendly, which was with our first choice 11, albeit the result there boosted up by two late penalties to Facundo Falias, but a 5 0 win over Raul Valladolid does suggest that this tactic could work quite nicely. We'll see how it does get on in the early stages of the Premier League season. But winning most of our games, apart from that first one, where I think I stuffed up the player roles and the overall squad mentality for that one. Apart from that, we have looked quite good, very solid at the back. So hopefully that does continue once we do get stuck into the Premier League. And a few things that you might need to keep an eye out on over the first few episodes, some things which could pop up, as mentioned earlier, Carl Jacob Hein, unlikely to get a work permit. So we have agreed that if a bid does come in for him, we will consider it. His transfer value is just under £700,000 if we get a bid like that. We might need to go and hunt of a new backup goalkeeper. And also, in terms of the managerial situation with some clubs, it was unresolved before we did make those last couple of sales and signings. Eventually, Manchester United did find a second new manager, and they have appointed Roger Schmidt as their manager. That looks like they're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1. They've actually paid him the same as Ruben Nisseroy 
is getting over at Tottenham. He has been in charge of Benfica so far in the save universe. Not a bad get there for Manchester United. Eventually off the back of that slight issue that they did have there. With Valverde leaving them after 24 hours to go and join the Spanish national team. But also there is still one job in the Premier League which has not been taken. That is the Watford job. But it does look like Alexander Fry will get that job. He is under a bid. But very interesting to see. He is leaving Rangers to join Watford. That almost seems like a bit of a backward step going from a team which is pretty much guaranteed to finish second in the Scottish Premiership and get some form of European football to join a team newly promoted to the Premier League, even though they do so as the Championship winners. But it does mean in the future, the Rangers job might come up. Whether that's something that we are interested in, not too sure. But let me know down in the comments if you think going from Cardiff to Rangers is a good move or a bad move because I'm not too sure what I would do if that was the case. Quite happy the squad that we are building here at Cardiff City with some of the better young players in the world. Obviously that next gen winner from last season but would be very interesting if Rangers did say come in for us. Not saying that it will happen but it could happen. Might be interesting to see if that does turn out here to maybe go and have a quick stint in Scotland before maybe one of the big clubs do come after us here in the Premier League. But that will do it for today's episode. And this is where our best team does look like going into the new season, albeit Brian Quisada is suspended for the first game of the season. So usually he would be in there in place of Savino. And if we get the position roles and duty sorted out or having him in the team, that is what we should line up like for most of the season. The only real change to this first team 11 is that Jovic does start out on the right wing and Dominguez does drop on the bench and also Bayam comes in to centre back in place of Erhog Hyde and a few changes to a lot of those bench options but staying 11 wise very similar to last season so hopefully with the new tactical style we can maybe improve a little bit and get some guaranteed European football for next season but that will do it for today if you like those transfers that we did do then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you're enjoying this series here on the channel and haven't done so already also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow and get stuck into the start of our third full season here at Cardiff City it's our fourth one overall as we did take over with a half year left in the championship first time around and we'll play our first two games in the Premier League against a few teams which took points of us at the end of last season in frustrating fashion first off we travel to take on Brighton away from home and then we will take on Crystal Palace so the two games I'd like to think we can get decent points out of to start the season especially that Crystal Palace one at home and off the back of that we'll probably come back and see if we do any business around those games against Watford and Brentford either side of transfer deadline day but until tomorrow we start off the Premier League season thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs>